So you have these MIDI files and XML files on your choir disc, but you don't know what they are or how to use them. This video is designed to help you with them and to demonstrate how to use them effectively in the free Finale Notepad. MIDI and XML files contain data that allows you to hear your music. With the right program, not only can you hear your music, but you can see it. You can also control tempo, dynamics, and even the sound of the instruments. You can make your part louder than everyone else's so that you can hear your part in context, or even make your part a solo so that it is the only thing that you hear. The sounds generated by MIDI and XML files are not always great, but with the right software, you can use them to effectively teach yourself your individual part. One software that members of the MCTC choirs have found really useful is called Finale Notepad. Finale Notepad is a free software that's available for both Macs and PCs. You can find it just by typing Finale Notepad into Google or another search engine. From this point on, this video will demonstrate how to use Notepad. You might want to pause this video and follow the publisher directions for downloading and installing Notepad. Then, once you've installed it, you can come back to this video and resume where you were. At this point, you have installed Finale Notepad. So let's open it. And on a Mac, I'm just going to go browse for it and you probably know how to find it on your PC. We open it up. Usually it'll give you a window the first time you open it asking for your serial number. When you downloaded this, your browser gave you a screen with that number on it, but it also sent you an email with the number. It's okay, you can paste that in now or you can do it later. It really doesn't matter, it's gonna work fully anyway. So I'm gonna say remind me later. Usually then it'll bring you a document setup wizard. Don't use it. Click cancel. We're going to open something that's already existing. From this point, you're going to want to open a file. So to do that, you're going to go to file. And if you're going to do a MIDI file, you would just click open and browse for your file. We're actually going to do music in XML because sometimes you get a little more information with them and uh, they're a little more detailed. So you go to Music XML and Import. So you browse for your choir CD and then look for the choir XML files and choose the one you want. I'm going to voc Vocal Ensemble and I'm going to choose this one. So I'm going to click Open and just wait for it it takes a little bit. You'll see this little spinning spinning uh, note and then it's open. Alright, now you might just want to play it. So to do that, go click Window and Playback Controls. Here you'll see just something that looks like you might find on a remote control or DVD player. To do this, you can just click Play and you'll see right here that you've got music You've got words. Sometimes you won't have words. I only do the words when this is in the public domain. You'll see all the notes, and you can follow along. You can pause. You can go backwards. You can go back to the beginning. Those are all, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Another thing that's cool about the playback controls is that you can adjust the tempo. So, say you're playing and uh, you don't really like the speed you want to make it a little faster, a little slower. You should be able to do that. So let's say I want it really fast. Let's do 150 just for fun. Okay. And if it's too fast, you can always slow it down. Just make a, a smaller number, like 60, which will be really slow. You can see that's super slow, but sometimes it can be helpful. So that's how you set tempo. Now, another thing that you really can do that's that's
that's pretty fun is that you can make one part louder than the rest of them or you can just have your part solo uh, or you can change the instruments. And here's how to do this, and this is, I think, really great. The score manager will allow you to change instruments. You can change the volume of a single part. So you can make it louder. You can solo it. You can mute it. Uh, how do you find that? To do that, you go to Window, Score Manager. You're going to see the parts are listed, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, to make just one part um, stand out by itself, you can click solo. Then that's the only part you're going to hear. If you want to hear this and the basses, you could click these two. Or if you want to hear everything but the altos, you could click mute. So M means mute and S means solo. That's how that works. Now volume. I wish volume was a little easier to deal with, but it's not. You have some control over volume, and it's based on numbers. The highest number that you can do is 127, and then you can go much softer than that. So, for example, if instead of muting or soloing, you wanted your part to be the loudest one and everybody else to be soft, you could set yours at 127, and then you could set everybody else's maybe at 50. So you could hear them, but they would be really soft. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's just experiment with that so you can hear it. I'm going to get back to those playback controls and just play a little bit of it. So you notice how you can really hear the soprano and you can hear everything else but you hear the soprano the most loud. That's a really useful tool. And right, I'm going to stop that. Now, I'm going to I'm going to reset the the volume back to the original defaults. Cuz I want to show you one other cool thing. So another really neat thing that you could do is you can change the sound of the instrument. Let's say that what you really want to do is just make your sound, make your instrument stick out just a little bit by changing it. So if everything else is grand piano but you make yours be flute, you might be able to hear yours a little bit more loudly. So what you do is you single click on sound, click edit patch, and then here where you see general MIDI you can choose different instruments and just for fun I think I'm gonna choose flute if I can find it because that's a really nice instrument to be able to hear against piano so now I've got my soprano part on flute everything else is grand piano and let me play that for you so you hear how that sounds So just by changing the timbre like that, you've changed how things sound and it can make things easier for you. I'm going to put that back to, to piano just so I'm back to my original settings. You don't need to do that. You do whatever works for you. I'll close this up. Again, just to review, the two most important controls for you in using your MIDI and your XML files are your score manager and your playback controls. And you can always find them by going back to the window and then that will allow you to listen to things. You do not need to save this. In fact, I recommend that you don't unless you've made changes that are helpful to you in practicing and you're going to come back to it. Eventually, you might want to take everything off of your disk and just put it onto your desktop so you have easy access to it. So that is it. That is the way to use Finale Notepad for your XML and your MIDI files. And enjoy.